Hello, this is the second part of our project making a 2D platform shooter. If you haven't seen the first part, you can check it here at this card. Okay, so to remember, this is what we have for now. A player that can walk, jump, shoot, kill the enemy. So now we can improve it. Let's start putting a background on our game. So first we can add a sprite. This asset is from H.I.O. I will put the link in the description. There are a lot of sprites, I will just randomly choose one of them. And now we can adjust the size to make it fit to the screen. Let's bring it to the top, so that it will be behind the other nodes. Let's check it. Okay, it's nice. But let's try to remove the ground. Not sure if this is a good idea, but I will keep it so for now. I guess we'll need to make some changes later at the background, because the color is so bright. And at the bullet too, because we can almost not see it. But we will check that later. Now we will keep working at the background. What we will do now is make our background be infinite to the sides, so that we can run and the background will be repeated so many times as needed. So to do that we create first a parallax background, and inside of it a parallax layer. And now here at the parallax layer we need to set the mirroring to the size of the screen. As we just need it to repeat to the sides, we need just to set the x-axis. Now before we can test it, we need to set a camera to the player, so that the camera will follow him. So we create the camera at the player, and we need to mark current to activate the camera. So we can see that the background is correctly repeating to the sides, and that the camera is following the player, but there are a lot of other problems that we need to fix. First, let's go back to the player and make some adjusts to the camera. Let's put the player at the left bottom part of the camera. Let's remove the sprite from the ground for now. But as we are still testing the game, I will make the collision shapes visible, so that we can see exactly when collisions occur. I'm not totally satisfied with the camera, I will move it a bit more. Now let's create a simple wall behind the player to avoid him to fall from the platform. Ok, so now the camera is better, the player don't can fall from the platform at the back side. But when we jump, we see this black part above the background. That happens because the camera moves higher than the background's height. So let's change that first. Let's go back to the player, to the camera, and then we go to the editor and activate this option. This option just makes the limits of the camera visible at the editor, so that we can see them. Now we go to limit and we can change the limit to the top. At the moment, as we can see, all sides are infinite. So the camera will never stop to follow the player. So let's change it to the top and we can see this yellow line showing where the limit is. Let's test it with zero so it will never pass the zero point. Nice. 
Now let's add some extra platforms to our game. So we can do that editing the ground scene. Let's make a copy from this static body node. Since the last Godot version you can make that just using Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Let's rename both so that we can identify them. And now let's add a sprite to the platform. Here I will use a sprite that I made myself in like 10 seconds. It's just a rectangle from 400 by 40 or something like that. Now we just need to make the collision shape match the sprite. And now let's save this platform as a scene, so that we can reuse it easier and if we want to change something later, all of the platforms will change at the same time. So let's put the platform here in some random place. Now let's increase the size of our ground. And now let's add more platforms. Oh, I saved the platform in the wrong folder. Let's just put it in the correct one. Okay, I hope it will not break anything. But let's add more platforms and test it. I guess we can scale the ground even more. Now let's go back to the main scene to check what we have for now. It's nice, but we can move it a bit to the right. And now let's run it. Okay, back to the editor. Let's make the background darker, to make it easier to see the player, the enemies, the platforms and the bullets. And I will make a small adjust here at the gravity, so that it will be just increased when the player is not at the ground. And I will change a bit the values too, to make the player fall faster and jump faster too. So in my opinion that is better now. But you can try to change these values and see if you find something that you like more. Okay, now let's make some change to our bullets. I will not make big changes for now. Let's scale them up a bit, make them move a little faster. Let's see it. Okay, I think it's better. Now let's make some changes to our animations. So we go back to the player scene and let's add an idle animation.
Now we can go back to the script to manage the animations. So when the player is moving to the right, we have to play the red animation. But we will use the same animation to move the player to the left and to the right. So we need to add an extra line before the animation to inform if the animation will be flipped or not. So here it will not, and at the left direction it will. And now we just need to add the idle animation. Now let's run it. Ok, so the idle animation is fine. Animation to the right is fine too. To the left. But we need to fix our bullets, because at the moment they just shoot to the right. There are multiple ways to do this, but I will use the animation flip to inform the direction. So I will pass the flip to the shoot function, and then I will pass that to the bullet, so that when the bullet is created, it will know if the animation is flipped or not. Now we need to go to the bullet script to receive this information. So let's create this init function. Let's create an extra variable to hold the information to. So here, just to remember, if the flip is false, we need to shoot to the right. So let's go back and make that. If the reaction is true, we shoot to the left, else we shoot to the right. And now let's check what we have. Ok, we are shooting in the right direction, but we still need to make a little adjust. Because the bullet is spawning at the position 2D node, that's always at the right side. So let's flip our animation to check where would be a nice position at the left side. Ok, I guess 15 and negative 15 are good positions. Now let's test it. And now it's working fine. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please consider subscribe, give a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you want me to keep doing this series, please leave a comment too. And thank you for watching. Bye.